could briefly introduce yourself, your name, your department, and what your areas of specialty are. Thank you, Nandine. Uh, so uh, my name is Luis Braga. I work at McMaster Children's Hospital. Uh, I'm an associate professor. Uh, in terms of my specialty, I do pediatric urology, which is a specialty that, that address like the kidney, uh, the bladder, and all the genital area. Like then it would include the hypospadias and the sandy testes. Could you tell us a little bit about hypospadias, the incidence, and um, specifically how many children in your clinic are referred for hypospadias? Pretty much, I think in North America, it'll be one to uh, 250 or between 200 and 300. We do between 60 to 80 cases a year. So one to two a week. So hypospadias can be found in the setting of uh, other conditions, like um, understand the testes or on rectal malformation or even some syndromes. Okay. But it usually tends to be like an isolated, isolated uh, condition. So complications before the treatment uh, are none. Yeah, so this has been well studied uh, as you advance in terms of uh, in the spectrum from uh, mild to severe, uh, the complication rate increase. So we have done a couple of studies on that, but uh, when we look at our database, so for distal cases, we have a complication rate around uh, uh, maybe two to three percent, but uh, for sure underneath five percent in general. So if you go in the mid part of the penis, the complication rate will increase to uh, between the five and the 15 percent mark. Okay. And when it's proximal, then it goes from the 15 to 25. Uh, and if it's a redo case or a reoperation, can come to as high as 30 percent. Hypospadias again is more than just the, the P hole location and has those three components ventral curvature, dorsal hood, uh, redundant uh, or part of the foreskin being asymmetric and missing, and the location of the erythromatis. And um, because those three components, most of the time there is at least one or two missing, so we recommend uh, surgery in almost the majority or the overall majority of kids with hypospadias. There is only one treatment for hypospadias, which is the surgical treatment. We strongly recommend the correction because we can achieve a more uh, normal looking type of penis uh, that will benefit the child that, that sometimes in, in severe form, the child cannot stand to void. So they have to sit. Uh, the curvature can be a problem even with painful erections in the future because the penis is tethered now by those fibrotic bands and uh, they, they can never shoot far. Uh, in Canada, it's very common for kids to pee in the snow and write their name. They like to play with that. So in a boy with hypospadias, it seems a small thing, but usually they are not uh, able to achieve that. The guidelines, we, we are supposed to do hypospadias repair between 6 months to 18 months of age. Yes, they can, um, and I think more and more we are seeing some patients that either the parents decided not to, to have the child operate on or they postpone for certain reason. And uh, we see primary or what we call virgin cases coming for repair. The techniques that uh, are used in adolescents or adults, young adults are the same used in children. And there is a, actually a recent paper uh, from Snodgrass that shows that re repair, uh, the success rates in children versus adults uh, is similar. Previous studies had shown that the complication was higher in, a, in adult repairs. And um, I believe that even if it's not higher, it is more difficult, it's challenging. The post-op is difficult because uh, patients will experience erection and with erection uh, comes pain and sometimes disruption of the stitches. 
So this can affect the, 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 the outcome. And the fact that most of the time we have to leave a catheter in place, and this is very uncomfortable for a grown man or a teenager as opposed to a baby that is in diapers, so we leave the catheter in, into two diapers. So they move along and um, they are incontinent. So this doesn't, doesn't affect their, uh, their life. Usually we do this operation, like I said, when they are a year old. So the catheter for most type of repairs stays in for a week. Um, so the, we leave this catheter folded into two diapers. So it's very convenient for the families and for the babies. Uh, so they come back in a week for catheter removal. Uh, at that point, uh, the penis is um, in the majority of cases healed. The stitches, they are dissolvable stitches, they are absorbable stitches, so they dissolve, they don't need to be removed. Um, and then we normally see this child six weeks after, and then at that point, uh, the penis looks like completely uh, healed. So I would say that um, uh, the initial phase of healing takes a week, uh, but then after a month, the, the penis is, uh, the, this healing process, process is complete. I find that the best thing would be they should express that they are feeling like you no know, anxious concern and then it doesn't take long but uh, in a few weeks they will be able to see a specialist like a pediatric neurologist that would provide all the counseling or I think put their mind at ease explaining the forms what would be the uh, the recommendations in terms of treatment the surgery uh, that it's very um, there is very low risk and the success rate is high so then this gives them like you no know, hope or reassurance that things are going to be fine. Uh, and also there are a lot of uh, websites and social media groups that have information about hypospadias. I don't know the source of those. My main concern is that usually they are more uh, pessimistic. This particular uh, aspect of hypospadias, which deals with the genital area, which is something that uh, some may, may tend to, it's a private area, so they don't want to share, they don't want to uh, disclose. So this makes it more difficult because you have a very biased view online towards negative results. Because the good results, people don't want to show their penis, say, look, I had a great operation, look at my penis. Advice would be to come and seek for expertise from the source. And then if you have more questions or have read stuff, then you have a direct conversation with your doctor. What I would tell a parent who just uh, like a mother who has a baby and then he was found to have hypospadias, I'll tell them that this is something that it's, uh, uh, it is not life-threatening, uh, so that they shouldn't worry in the first year of life. Um, that the baby can and will can and will have a normal life uh, can be repaired completely even in the most severe forms with uh, very good results.